Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Um, we're here to welcome Paul Wakefield. Paul, it's very nice to have you here in Bad Homburg in the gallery. We have an exhibition of Paul's work until the 1st of June 2024. And before we get to talking about some of the pictures, Paul, maybe you can fill us in about history. How did you get into photography? How long? What have you been doing? Uh, well, I've been doing it. I, I, I did a college course in the very early 70s, a three-year course and a one-year foundation course mm -hmm. previously. And then I started freelancing when I was still at college in the last year, oh, okay. using the college studios and coming down to London. My, my college was in Birmingham and in the north of England, well, Midlands. And then coming down to London to um, uh, get jobs at the end of the week from publishers and people like that. And then going back to uh, the college and using their studios and equipment. And so I, I think one of my own. after you left college, you then started more kind of commercial photography work. Well, that, and in yeah. case anyone um, remembers it, and I do because I love it, um, Paul actually made the images on two of Supertramp's very well-known albums, um, Prime of the Century and Crisis What Crisis. Um, and and also then you were in the advertising business. So tell tell us about that that time. That was before you moved more into landscape photography. Yeah, well, I, I mean, during one's career, you always want to try and challenge yourself, you know, each mm. time. And the, the book covers and the design work was was fine, but it was quite minimalistic. It was all still life. It was in the studio, um, which was great because I was learning about lighting. And then I, you know, I just I just decided I want to start doing record covers because it was really interesting work and you saw incredible ideas being um, commissioned. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, you just at, at that time, you could literally knock on people's doors, phone them up and go and see the art director. Brilliant. Have a meeting and you might come out with something you might not. And that was the same in advertising as well. No, that was not the same. You could not do that in advertising. And so that's how I got those record covers. Mm -hmm. And um, and it, yeah, it was all good fun. And and then I wanted to earn more money because record covers, even though they're good fun, they don't actually earn you a lot of money. Okay. <clears throat> and so um, I then had to get an agent. <clears throat> you cannot you cannot phone up uh, uh, an art director or an art buyer in an agency if you haven't got an agent. They just won't talk to you. Even then, even back then, it was all done through agents. And um, an agent would represent maybe half a dozen photographers. So that was successful. And then you, you yeah. moved into... The advertising world, and I think you did quite a lot for various alcohol, cigarettes. And I did. I didn't. Do, I never did cigarettes. Okay. No, I never did mm -hmm. cigarettes. I completely um, refused to do that, and I refused to do other things as well. Mm -hmm. Like I was once asked to do a campaign for nuclear fuels. I didn't do that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't. I mean, even though um, I, I, I agree completely with 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 um, the whole green policy that's around nowadays. Um, at, at that time, it wasn't anything like as strident. Yes. And also, I drive a car myself. I mean, yeah. it would be a bit hypocritical if I didn't do a car ad. So, so it, it was, you did a lot of cars. I did a lot yeah. of cars. Okay. I did a lot of things like running shoes for New Balance and, oh, and people right. like that. I did work okay. for banks. Um, and it was all outside mm -hmm. with natural light, with no added um, artificial light at all. All right. So let's move from history to um what we're what we he what we're here to talk about today which is the the exhibition um and this is the nature of landscape is what we call the exhibition it's on until the 1st of june and um over on the left here you see the word optical democracy we'll get into that and what it means it's not at all political and what we have on the walls here is some um, of the prints from Paul's fantastic book, The Landscape, of which we have a few copies here in the gallery. And the book is divided into five sections, woodlands, rylands, snowscapes, shorelines, and rockscapes. And we're going to go through, through them and have one example from each of those. And so we're moving away from the advertising business to landscape. Was that a big change for you? Well, no, I was always doing landscape. Okay, but my own, but my own landscape. I mean, I was doing that since I was since I was in college. Mm -hmm. That was my main interest, and in fact, that photograph um, previously was um, 
shot on a job <clears throat> in New Zealand. Oh, um, okay. And and so I tend to use that because it's quite a good shot for you know because people want a picture of you in the landscape. Yeah. And I and I haven't got many to be honest with you because okay. Um, there weren't little digital cameras then. There were no phones. No, you and you're always on your own. You're on, and, and mostly I'm on, not on, not on jobs, but certainly on my own. I'm on my uh, when I'm doing my own work. I'm on my own. Mm -hmm. So anyway. So here is here is um, here is one from the first section, Woodlands, um, and this is Torridon, which is in Scotland. In Northwest Scotland, yeah. Tell us about this because it, to me, it it it, it it's just so totally peaceful. Well, it, it 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 is an amazing spot. Oddly enough, it's one of the I think one of the only pictures that I've ever that I ever have ever taken, which is literally beside the road. And um, normally I walk quite a lot. But but I knew this lake very well. It's a small lake, and the road runs right along beside it, uh, quite a way above. So it, the, the the lake is about 50 feet below, and you clamber down. And when I drove past this time, the, there had been a huge amount of rain, and the, the lake um, level had risen to take the tree into its so under its surface. Oh, okay. When normally that tree is 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 above the surface, mm -hmm. and there's a gap, and consequently it's nearly always windy. And it was even windy here. And I think I had to wait for about half an hour before I um, made that exposure, which is about probably 10 seconds. Oh, yes, I was going to say, it looks because like a long exposure because, because of the, the water. water's yeah. blurred. Yes. But of course, the water's blurred, which is fine. Mm. But then you don't want the branches blurred. Yes. Because then, it, it, unless you're doing a different kind of picture. Yeah. yeah. And in fact, that's the only time I've ever seen that. That that place like and that. this is such a good example of of optical democracy where everything in an image has its own place. There is endless clarity. Everything is always in focus in all your images, and there isn't a lot of um, difference between some bright spots and some dark spots. Yes, you see a a, 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 a whitish sky here, and you and, and and it does get a bit darker, but there is nothing that that draws your eye away from from anything. It's there is no single focal point. Everything is the focal point. That's that's that's, that's true. That's true, and, and it, that's that's a lot to do with with balance. I mean, I think a picture is it's very important to have um, a really good quality of balance and imbalance. I mean, what you could it, 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 the whole picture as you described it is quite balanced. What is not necessarily balanced is the foreground. Because normally you would get people um, taking a, a foreground up either the whole way across or just that little bit in the middle, where I've added these rocks on the left-hand side. Mm. And I quite like an awkward composition. Okay. And that's kind of important to me mm -hmm. because it just throws it off being too perfect. Mm -hmm. And I don't, do it I don't do it deliberately. It just happens to be the way I see. And I, it, this is a good example of... of... Uh, optical democracy, as is as 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 is this the the, the next image we'll look yeah. at, because everything has its place, and I realise we're in probably in some kind of a, a, a desert here, but there is nothing that is so bright and so dark as to have such a contrast. This is no well, uh, optical the, the, democracy. Well, it is, and also um, I mean, optical democracy comes from. Um, um, a word that Cormac McCarthy used in his, in his book Blood Meridian that Robert McFarlane uses in the essay that introduces the the, the landscape, and he he um, sort of regarded what I was doing in, using a four by five camera, shutting the using camera movements mm -hmm. to to compensate for for planes of focus, mm -hmm. and then shutting down for a very small aperture, which people say you can't do, but I can I can assure you you can. Yes. Ansel Adams did it. I I do it, and loads of other people do it. And it brings by the by by that time it brings everything from literally at the at the point of your feet mm. into as far as you can see into sharp focus. And so what we haven't mentioned is you use um, an analog large format four by five camera. Yeah. Um, and so you can't carry around a um, uh, uh, hundred pieces of film. No, or, I've uh, got and... <laughs> I've got I've got ten dark slides and they okay. take two sheets of film each. Yes. And I generally. Um, uh, expose two sheets for each image, mm -hmm. and that's mainly um, if anything goes wrong in the processing with one sheet, mm -hmm. which believe me, it can happen. Yes, and, and so I'd, I'd rather have two good sheets than than no sheets at all. And, and, I, and <laughs> yeah. or I can have one good sheet and one bad sheet. But if I, I've never had two sheets ruined. 
Mm -hmm. But I have That's had good. one sheet good. Room. And so here we're looking at this this th th this vertical stack in the middle here. Um, is, is, it, is a bit more lit, and yeah. um, is there direct sunlight or there's indirect a, sunlight? There's, or a, there's, a, there's direct sunlight, but it's very early in the morning, and it's coming just okay. creeping over the top of a canyon on the right-hand uh -huh. side. Okay. And these little things are called hoodoos. Hoodoos. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's a little bit like um, a, a stack rock that you might get around the coast in mm -hmm. the UK or America. And it's a, I think it's a Navajo word. Mm -hmm. And it's a column of softer rock. Uh, with a with a with a, with a piece of much harder rock on the top, ah, okay. and the wind okay. the wind and rain and erosion washes the, the the column slowly away under the rock until in the end the rock will topple. And so we're in New Mexico here. No, we're on the border of Arizona and Utah. Ah, okay. Yeah. And then we move a little bit further north, and I think now we're in Alberta. Alberta. And this is obviously yeah. not um, some. <laughs> In 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 the summer, as the in the previous image, um, and what I love about this image here, this frozen lake um, in Alberta, is the way your eye is led into it from from those two diagonals in in, in lower left and lower right hand corner, and you your eye just moves up through the image. It does. Amazing. I mean, that's that, that, that's that's something lake. I do quite a lot because that's that's the reason I do it because it helps helps you to lead you into the picture. Mm -hmm. It also helps you, I believe, step over the threshold and walk into the picture, which is another thing that I like to try to do. But again, to 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 to, to sort of take up what I was saying a little earlier about, if you like, the imperfection of of a, of a of a composition to make it for me perfect, and that is that that triangle is slightly off center. Yes. And it mirror, but it mirrors a mountain in the left, which is slightly off center the other way. It's so carefully composed. So it, but you see, a, a lot of people might have put both things completely in the in center. The, yeah. Okay. And then I think you haven't got such an intriguing picture. I and think that's what I'm trying to, to, to show. I'm trying to show intrigue. Yes. And I'm trying to get people to be interested in not just what's in the frame, but what's outside the frame. You must be the most frustrated person frustrating person to go on holiday or on a photography exp expedition with because you spend an inordinate amount of time deciding whether you're going to be six inches to the left or six inches to the right and, and positioning is so incredibly important for you yeah, but i only get with myself so i, I can't oh i see I can't okay. frustrate myself can I? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> you're always on your own Very always good. on my own so yes this image is actually on the wall behind so you can yeah. you can you can see here yeah. um and the next image as well um is also on the wall behind you um and this is um the island of rum from the island, the island of the sky. sky yeah and so we're in scotland here yeah northwest scotland yeah and again you know you can see what i've it's, it's got a it got a slight similarity of structure to the previous picture yes and that it's got these you know um triangular diagonals moving through but again it shakes you over slightly to the right yes and then they bring you back again to the mountain which is over which which is over on the left yes the, so you could it's almost it goes to the right yeah, and then over there it, yes it's kind of it's kind of a, it's quite a good example that you know i do repeat things but in different locations yes, yes. um yes, yes. and i don't do it i don't do it because i'm I, I, i'm i'm looking to do it purposely i do it because what's in front of me for to me is the right way to photograph and I get myself standing on the right spot wherever I am, and and that I and I end up taking the picture that I do. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. And that's where individuality comes in when you're taking when you're making pictures. Because it's yes, it, it has because to be. I, I mean, I get myself on that spot, but I can't. You can't guarantee that anyone else is going to get themselves on the same spot. Mm -hmm. If you put, I mean, for example, Ansel Adams when he did a workshop, he lined his photographers up. There were twelve of them, and he asked them all to take what was in front of them. And he ended up with 12, 12 completely different, different yes. pictures. Yeah. So. Good point. And, and here um, is another example, again, in the same national park as we saw on the second picture, Grand Staircase Escalante. Um, and this is, I find, amazing because some, some of your images, they look almost monochrome, not black and white, but monochrome, you don't have a <clears throat> wide spread of colors. No, I don't. But just a restricted, limited number of maybe some blues and grays. And here we 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 see a very limited number of colors 
obviously apart from from in, in the lower left hand corner there there is this uh brownish rock but up here we've got this beautifully lit sort of sort it's of a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a hoodoo it's a hoodoo. it's a hoodoo that would have had a capstone on this here in the foreground is a capstone yes. Okay. On the left, that piece of brown uh -huh. rock okay. is a capstone. Under there would have been a column of rock, I don't know, maybe 15 foot high. Mm -hmm. And it slowly, slowly, slowly um, Erode. not eroded down and, 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 and sat now sitting on the ground. This one on the on uh, above it has lost its capstone. I don't know where it is. It's could have yes. lost it hundreds of thousands of years ago. Um, but that, that little hoodoo there um, is lit by bounce light. Oh, okay. Yes, I was going to it's, ask. There's why, no direct why light. So well lit yeah, here. Yeah, there's no it's direct light. light off off an, another canyon wall. Off a canyon wall, because I, you know, it's coming over my left hand shoulder over the over the canyon wall very early in the morning. Well, about eight thirty, mm -hmm. and it's hitting the canyon wall on the right hand the side. Right -hand side. And, mm -hmm. and then and it's hitting one particular facet of that wall, and that and it's a, a, probably the piece of about the size of a wall in this room, and then the light is bouncing back. Highlighting that little hoodoo, mm -hmm. and and and, it, and in five minutes, two, three, five minutes, it's gone. That's amazing. And in fact, I had to come back the next day to make that picture because I watched it disappear, because mm -hmm. I came across it, um, and I realized I, there was no time for me to get my camera out and make a picture. So I looked at my watch, came back down the next morning at four o'clock. Well, no, I, li okay. I, li I left the motel at four o'clock because it's about an hour and a half drive. Okay, so you and were there at seven o'clock. I was there at seven o'clock, okay. and then I, and then I was in front yeah. of this again at a, at about eight o'clock because I saw that at eight thirty, and that gives me a, an easily loads of time to set my camera up. Um, I sort of positioned myself the day before, and in fact, if I remember, I might even have put a little rock down where I stood. Oh, how clever! To so that you know where to, where I know to where to put my tripod. Brilliant, wonderful. So I do those. This is a very, very, very useful um, set of. Um, it's very useful discussion to know how you take pictures and why you take certain things from certain angles. Um, and I love the fact that you don't want to repeat things exactly, but show them slightly off, off center. Yeah. That, and that yeah, makes I mean, them personal. They're, 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 I mean, I suppose what they are—they're little habits and rituals that I go through. Yes, <clears throat> and um, and they—they—they they help me draw myself to a position that that I know is going to work for mm -hmm. me. That's 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 fantastic. So, if we if we if we go back to here, um, this is the nature of landscape. Please come to the gallery. We're here. Uh, this exhibition is on until the 1st of June. Our next exhibition will be from mid-June. It's actually Yi Sun is the first photographer I exhibited in this gallery three and a half years ago, and we're doing a repeat show. Um, so, Paul, thank you so much for coming. It's really well, great you, that you're here. Uh, uh, thank you. Thank it's you. a lovely exhibition. Um, Paul's prints are big. They're the what, what you see behind us is um 80 by 100 centimeters um the smaller ones are 60 by 80 um but they need to be that size because as paul said earlier his images you want to walk into the images and and to me it's like i want to dive into them and and be surrounded by whatever's in the image yeah thank okay. you paul thank you, thank you.